What's going on, guys? And welcome back. Still a little bit under the weather, so it might be a little shorter. But today, we're going to be talking about the newest season of Marvel Snap starting this Tuesday in Baron Zemo, the new 3-5. Is it going to be more like Hope Summers or more like Black Swan? Alex and I are going to break that down alongside all the new cards in the April season. We've got a Red Hulk coming out first. We know he's going to be crazy alongside a lot of unique kits that we haven't seen come to the game quite yet. We're going to be talking about that all today more on this episode of the Snapchat. And as always, I am joined by Mr. Alex Kocha. Hello, buddy. Hello. Happy new season. Our favorite video of every single month, man. Uh, as you know, you've escaped the sickness uh, and I just welcomed it, buddy. Uh, so you guys are going to have to put up with a a little bit of different you know it's never just a, a throat tickle you know you get off the plane and you're like you know there's something there's something there maybe it's just uh the airplanes no no full-on strep throat man coming off the uh the come down of that bud uh but uh, you're healthy and well yeah i am i'm feeling great cozy not to rub it in i uh, just so the viewers know like cozy's actually trying like 110 percent right now to project his voice uh talking to him before literally had no voice whatsoever what an absolute chat here the show must go on cozy like i i listen i think what it was is that okay so we were outside in boston we were waiting for grilled cheese sandwiches which is ironic because like i'm super lactose intolerant but i'm sitting there and i'm like hey let's get these gr uh, these uh, grilled cheese sandwiches and we're sitting there and like it's like super cold outside cozy's wearing like a jacket and a sweater he's like i'm so cold the san diego just coming out from you and i'm like this is pretty good actually i'm really comfortable so i wonder if it was like the weather difference although science does say you can't get sick from the cold <laughs> i mean yeah it uh, after like 30 minutes alex finally was like yeah my canadian has has rubbed off i'm i'm, I'm now cold i'm now officially yeah. Cold yet, yeah, dude. I feel like getting uh, strep is like one of those things that like you forget how it is on the other side. You know what I mean? Like you don't ever realize your throat's fine, and then all of a sudden you you, you swallow and you're like, okay, hold on, hold on. Life is terrible. Like I don't I don't remember what life was like beforehand. But yeah, it was probably the cold man. It was someone at PAX, the uh, the one of the one of the fans maybe, or just one of the one of the many people we ran into. But before we continue, Alex, just one last kind of note uh, as we get things kicked off here. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy. We've done this now for what 70 plus weeks. There's not uh, there's not a lot of easy ways to go into the conversation. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, we, we love doing this for you guys. It, it, we haven't missed a week yet. Uh, but uh, Alex, uh, you tell them together. Do you want to just you say it, me say it how you want to do it? I'll let you say it. It's it's a sensitive subject. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's our. This is going to be the last episode uh, of the snapshot. We really hope it's one that you guys enjoy, and, and we know we're going to. We have a lot of cool subjects. Uh, with the first subject being Alex. Uh, April Fool's. We are definitely, definitely keeping this on another seventy plus weeks, uh, dude. I don't. I've never been a big fan of April Fools. Like, have you? I feel like there's always somebody that takes it too far. Maybe we've taken it too far right now. Uh, but have you ever had someone do like something wet? You're a teacher. You're bound to have had that. Nah, you know what, man? Like the, the classic, like, you know, chalk in the, the brush thing. We don't even have chalkboards anymore or anything like that. Like it's pretty tame. Like there's really nothing that happens. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if April Fool's is still really a thing, but uh, I, you let him go way too early, man. I would have gone for another 45 minutes. I would have let him go the entire the episode, full episode, not even knowing, man. Dude, we should have released, we should release a video like Angel's Buff, Best Card and Snap, do a full thing on it, man. Instead, that's going to be, uh, that'll be next year's. Try to remember it. Uh, but on that, we do have a lot of good things to talk about on the Snapchat. And uh, what are we talking about on your side, bud? All right, as Cozy mentioned, due to illness, we're going to keep things a little tighter this week. So on my side of the channel, we're going to be doing the final rankings from the prior season. One of my favorite topics to discuss every single month. We'll also be going to our Snapchat mailbag. Oh, it's killing me too, man. I got back from Boston. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to make videos every single day this week. War Machine came out. Like I was so amped for the content. Infinity Conquest, I always love doing at least like one run or so of that. Uh, but yeah, dude, so... Well, let's go to get right to it. Let's get into the newest season. If you guys are uh, first time listeners, maybe, uh, or if you forgot, we, we're going to go through every single card. We start with obviously Baron Zemo or the season pass card. And uh, now right before this season launch, uh, we got updates to all of their numbers. This is not finalized because I, I'm sure, uh, you know, we're filming this on Easter. Happy Easter for those that celebrated. Uh, but we do not have the official video yet uh, of what is to, to come with these cards. So I guess there could be some changes i think these are probably locked how they're gonna be uh but pretty much every card got some type of an update uh because i think we covered these slightly about a couple months back yeah 
Yeah, we did. We did like kind of like, are you excited for type segment on your side? I remember it was cool. I, I liked doing that. I hope we do that again. And um, we will do it again. It was fun. But what I'll say is that like, yeah, they did get updated. But like we even saw, was it last month? No, no, it was the, uh, oh my gosh, Beta Ray Bill got updated like just randomly before, like immediately before his launch, right? So truly anything can happen. Like these are the best statistics and the best information we have right now. But anything can happen, man. Dude, I feel like I know you so much more now that we like hung out in person and we'd even get to hang out enough. Like we were just, we were doing, you know, between the Snapchat stuff and all that. Like it, it doesn't it feel different. Like I feel like I, I, I've i known you for 73 weeks, but I know you more now, you know? You know what, man? Honestly, I, when I got home, I was talking to my wife and I was like, meeting Cozy in real life was just such an incredible experience. It just, it felt like the the best friend that I, I knew I knew, but I had never met yet. It was the weirdest thing on, on earth. It was just, and I, I really hope that everyone listening can one day feel the way I felt when like we finally saw each other. And you got to tell them the story how we like first kind of like met each other because like you, I saw you first. Yeah, yeah. So there's a picture that Alex posted on Twitter, which is awesome. I think it's so cool that this, uh, someone captured it. Uh, shout out to Dave. Uh, but essentially I was doing, uh, like this interview content with, uh, with cosplayers. Uh, it was their uh, second dinner had me out there and I was doing these, these interviews and I've had a couple people at that point come up and, and, and say hello and whatnot. And, and from the rafters, we're in the main area and from the rafters way up top, I hear this like, cozy, and I can't scream it now, obviously for, uh, for my, my sickness reason, but just cozy, cozy. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's someone yelling. Like who, who's yelling for me? Like, what is this? And I look up to the rafters. There's like like the titanic look up and i'm like there he is man it took me a second right like because you, you could see my face i was kind of like ch like giving one of those and then as soon as i saw it was you man uh i, I stopped the interview midway and just gave you a, uh the hug. people thought it looked like i was going in for for a smooch <laughs> so funny so i yelled oh my God. I, I yelled omg is that cozy snap and then you looked up and you said is that alex i heard you say it to felicity as i ran down the escalator it was it was truly a, like a once in a lifetime experience but yeah it, it does feel completely different now the snapchat because like it's like i know this man like i got to hang out with this guy we had oh my god what was the what was the sandwich place we went to all those times you oh me yeah, yeah so guys like you know we had a grilled cheese and they were like 80 dollars or something so we're like Awful. okay yeah screw that let's go get uh i'm like hey i'm gonna take him to jimmy john's and i and i take him there guys and he's like what is this subway what 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 this this is this is trash food and he finished that sandwich and he's like that's one of the best sandwiches that i've had i'm not gonna lie and we had it like five times <laughs> i kept asking to go back <laughs> kept having it dude but uh more on the uh the snap front guys the new season pass card baron zemo the baron zemo from war machine to him a couple of cool you know pretty iconic it, it probably more towards war machine baron though is definitely up there the reason why Captain America Iron Man had the strife. You guys know him from obviously Civil War and plenty of other shows. Uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier. Guys, Baron Zemo is a three cost, five power card now. We got our second one of those uh, after what was it? Black Swan. Uh, so craziness there. With the ability on reveal, recruit the lowest cost card from your opponent's deck to your side of this location new word in there recruit pretty much guys just means it's not being played you're kind of just you're putting it on your side of the board and uh alex as always before the synergy before everything we're going to be giving a lot of star ratings and on your side we're doing the final ranking so what is your first impression ranking a baron my first impressions on baron are uh, i'm going with a three star rating I could see him going higher, but it's a brand new type of effect. Like this recruit keyword is brand new. So it'd be interesting to see how that actually affects gameplay. If it's truly as strong as we hope it is. Does the Yondu change from a couple of like uh, two months ago, was it? The Yondu got changed. Does that really help to elevate Baron, for instance? I don't know. It's like one of those cards that we really want to get our hands on before testing. And there's a couple that are, this month that are kind of tricky to evaluate in advance. And I feel like Baron's one of them. I thought the same thing, man. I So it's funny. I'm proud of you, by the way because you know back in the black swan at three five it was like an insto five star from alex but we've learned we've learned from our ways so obviously the values there obviously you know five uh power we know is a good stat line but in black swan's case we've seen that just because it's good value doesn't mean it'll always be played and i think people will read the ability and, and, and go cuckoo for cocoa puffs but uh, let's talk about the pros the cons and where we sit i i'm gonna give it about a three and a half actually with the upside of four but three and a half is where i sat uh, and it's funny you said three because, you know, if you take away the halves, we're probably around the same, uh, you know, the same point line. Now, the reason I think it could go to four is it does have that Loki effect. We have to remember people play good cards, right? People play, people put good cards in the deck. 
So even though it's randomized, you are going to have essentially the, the possibility of having some nut pulls from their deck, right? Whether that's just like a, a seven power, you know, card, eight power, gladiator, whatever it might be, you know, obviously it's going to have that value. But I, maybe let's start with maybe the bad. No, let's go. Let's go with the good first. Then we'll go to the bad and, and maybe why we think uh, it, it maybe won't land where we think it is. But I think there's a lot to be excited about. And I think at the top of that list is, is I put this on the thumbnail. It's kind of a new archetype coming in a way. We've had a lot of these mill potential decks or these kind of theft decks. or, But this might be the final key to have this rounded out deck where you're stealing cards, you're taking things, you're destroying cards, and you're thinning their deck to a point Whereas the game extends, maybe with something even like magic, you have now had that opponent run out of cards and they have to play with what they have. You know some of the stuff they've lost. They kind of know some of the stuff they lost. And I think that could be really unique for Baron Zemo. And I'm excited about that. And I think Yondu, to your point, that now destroys the lowest card, could be a little synergy there. Yeah, it's it's funny you mention that because like in my notes I have like like literally mill decks might be legitimate. Now I'm not sure if they are because we've had some activators in the past, but I feel like Baron's like the cherry on top. You needed a good statted mid range card to really activate that archetype because before it didn't really make sense, right? Um, and like to speak to your point, you got Yondu at one. Now you have the Cable at tur at turn two, which has been buffed. And I don't know about you, Cozy. I've been liking Cable. I think Cable's pretty awesome as a 2-3, super disruptive, really good Conquest card as well. And then if you really go deeper, you brought him up already. Gladiator. Gladiator's technically a mill card too. Yeah, exactly. So there's a good, yeah, two point, a lot of card potential there. Maximus, once you've milled that deck out, you're able to play him safer or you can just get, you know, max that deck size a little bit more. Uh, and, and as we know, uh, Mockingbird is a crazy card and she's going to have some synergy with him as well. Uh, but so, okay, right off the bat, the good is you're getting a free card. Now, sometimes, sometimes, you know, it's going to be bad per se, but I think most of the time it'll be good. We tried to think of the same thing with Loki. Like, what if you get bad card copies? You're not going to get a lot of Bast. You know, you're not going to get Bast on your side a ton of times. People have these decks that are pretty rounded out in a good way. So I would say a lot of the times you're going to get yourself a nice ability and a pretty good stat line when you play Baron. What's kind of weird about him, though, is he's better off curve. He's better to play later, typically, because your opponent most likely is going to play their cheaper cards at first, meaning you have the chance to pull maybe the Infinite, maybe something or whatever that's left in that deck, maybe something a little bit bigger. Or if you're, you know, more skillful, you know what deck you're playing. You kind of have seen what's been played and you can articulate, hey, this is the possibility of what is out there. And then Baron gets that. You know what I mean? So that's a little bit of a weird play with him, uh, which could make him wonky in some cases. I totally understand that, but at the same time, like, I was thinking about that, but I was thinking as well that, like, you can't control the composition of your opponent's deck, nor can you control what order they're drawing their cards. So I feel like it might be one of those situations where you're going to drive yourself insane if you fixate too much on, like, I got to draw the highest value card possible. I, I think you got to almost just do the thing, you know what I mean? Or else you're going to drive yourself nuts. Which then we hit his biggest con, and that is, uh, listen, you could be thinning their deck, right? Like, if they have a, you know, there's times where, like, Kitty Pride is imperative, but if they've got a Nico, yeah, Nico's important, but that Nico going away means they have that much more access to maybe their Venom. And on that note, we're kind of throwing a lot out there, but on that note of thinning their deck, potentially, if you look at popularity of the decks out there right now, what are they, Alex? What are the what are the three most popular decks in Snap right now? Thanos, Destroy, and Discard. Hey, tell me all those cards, maybe Thanos a little bit, are awful with Baron, right? Discard, you can get rid of something that you really, really like on your side. Uh, Carnage, you're just going to destroy your side, probably build up their null, right? So there is some scariness in the in the popularity of the meta right now with him as well. That's absolutely fair, right? I think that the meta is always going to be a major factor. Like the chance of you drawing their Deadpool and snapping, right? Possible. But if you're playing it on turn three, their Deadpool is irrelevant anyway, right? Like kind of to some extent. So you're right. And if you pull like their Morbius... And it's like, okay, I'm never going to activate this Morbius. It just sits on my side as a 2-0 occupying a spot. They don't get it, but, like, it's not really doing anything for you. So you are right. The current meta is a little weird like that. Like, hey, oh, cool, I pulled the Reality Stone. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, I guess you're excited about the card draw. But, yeah, the current meta might not be that great for Baron, but uh, it's time might come. 
and he's a, a three cost, right? So you know if you're playing destroy probably pretty early, right? Like you're, you're gonna know, oh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this, or maybe this is a turn six play instead, or whatever at that point, or if they've already played Carnage. The other part that's tough, and I guess I said I would start with the good and then go to the bad, but we're kind of getting away a lot of the things that maybe why we're not like jumping up and down necessarily. I also feel like what's great about cable is they have no idea, right? You have no idea. You get cable, you snap on them. You're like, hey, what did I get, right? Baron is going to be like, hello, neighbor. I took your freaking Shang-Chi. What are you going to do? Snap on it. So I, I feel like that could also limit his, his cube rate as well. Yeah, the fact that the it's face up, right? Like cable being face down is so beautiful because it's like, hey, buddy, I got your Silver Surfer. I got your Shuri. Or I got whatever that you know they're banking on, right? Um, talking about some synergistic stuff as well, I want to make an argument for like, I don't want to say Zabu specifically, but I was going through the list of like, okay, if we want to mill the deck, right? Like what cards exist? We talked about Yondu. We talked about uh, Cable. We talked about Gladiator. But there's a couple other ones. To some extent, Iron Lad, right? It's it's a second proc on an effect, right? Uh, you could make an argument for Wong, right? If you can get Wong going on turn three, then use Baron or whatever, or you Yondu Baron on turn four. That's kind of crazy. And Absorbing Man as well provides a lot of opportunity to kind of replicate this mill effect. And so like, honestly, I think that if you use those cards in tandem, you can go deeper into the deck than people are expecting, Cozy. And people are forgetting, we're going to bring his name up a lot today. People are forgetting Beast went down to two cost beast went down to two cost guys and if these are low cards coming on your side you don't mind getting that effect two times over baron effect twice is something hilarious alex if i show you this card i just tell me is it is it his time <laughs> is it his time man i don't know oh man baron moto i i honestly the other baron the thought crossed my mind but i was like no that's that's I'm coping too hard. Like I can't I can't even bring it up. I'm glad you did. Also, I can't believe you bought this variant. You're the only one who did. I had to get the. Uh, it was my final one to to do the the finisher. Or whatever. Of course, it was your final one. I mean, it could it could be and more so with Baron combined with the next card we'll talk about in a second. But Red Hulk, right? You know, you've got this card now that makes it tougher for them to play on their energy curve, whatever that might be. I do think, like all in all. If you look at Baron Zemo for what he is, I think he's a really fun card. He's cool. He has a lot of um, maybe unique play, and he's very flexible for that matter, right? Because he he does all in one. He's kind of his own thing. I just don't know if this is going to be one that we talk about two months from now. You know what I mean? I think he's a really he's, he's going to have that unique thing to the table. I'm sure he's going to be great in Surfer, uh, but time will tell uh, overall. So we're we're both around three. Yeah, we're both around three. And like even in Surfer, like how good's this effect? Like Surfer, especially the way current Surfer's running, where you're actually running Brute Absorbing Man now. Like that's kind of the common way to play Surfer. Uh, Nova Killmonger's back. And like Baron, you're occupying an extra spot on the board. And that if with Baron and the extra card, then you can't Brute Absorbing Man. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm sold on the Surfer, but like I can see it and I'm willing to be sold, but I don't know. Maybe like uh, we go Yondu, Cable, Gladiator, Maximus. And then we got what? Like Magic Surfer with... Baron, so you can mill Surfer maybe? Because you got all these cards that kind of Gladiator's in there, Baron's in there, mm -hmm. Magic's in there. Okay. That's actually huge stats across the board. Huge stats, man, and a, and a pretty big pop-off. Heck, you could even go Wong in there for the Surfer double up. We're seeing that in like the Toxic Surfer, but then you do double Zemo at some point, potentially. Uh, I, you know what? I also think this is where something like Grandmaster might be able to be chugged in there a little bit, because getting this effect twice and playing a card down, moving him over and playing it, but then with that, if, you know, Baron pulls an on reveal, you have the chance to use that one instead. So between Beast and, and replicating this effect, that could definitely be pretty damn good. Actually, there's something you mentioned that I, I hadn't really thought of. I, I did, but I don't, I'm not quite sure of the answer. Do we know yet if the recruited card oct activates its on reveal? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to, like, play the card but not play the card. I understand. So it's similar to, like, that of, like, Shauna. It comes into the field of play, will activate its on reveal, etc. I think so. I would, I would, I would imagine. And this is why it sucks that second engineer has to post it. I, I would imagine so. I think there's going to be, there'd be pros and cons that if it didn't, right? Because then some of them, you just want the stat stick. Because uh, yeah. if it didn't, man, then you're like pulling a mystique. That's just a three zero. Then this guy has a lot of downside. 
Yeah, because recruit's a new word, right? So we're not even really sure. And I checked prior. They hadn't really said it. I was hoping you knew for sure. But anyways, say la vie. We're on limited information as of recording. I would imagine uh, with cars they've released lately, like this would be, he probably is going to be just a good plug and play car. That's a lot of fun that, it, you know, you're going to have a couple of huge stands for the car, people that just love them. Uh, and then some that play them this season. And then you're going to have a lot of your Baron steals their Baron because everybody's playing them. And then that Baron plays a card and it, it gets kind of crazy kind of fast. Um, you know, you, you could also argue a point that Dazzler, Blue Marvel, maybe, maybe these cards that want to have a lot of, um, cards on the on the board could synergize with baron that's also a unique take yeah there's no question about it i do think that there's going to be like some potential interesting plays there and it's worth noting that you kind of just brought to mind as well i do think this card will be probably better in conquest for the same reason why cable and cards like colson and like they're better in conquest because when you're playing against the same opponent repeatedly and you you know what their deck is and you know you just disrupted them with their pull or with your yondu you know that you're negatively affecting their uh their game plan i think that you have much uh, stronger snap conditions in conquest as opposed to ladder so i do think this might be a card that's disproportionately stronger in conquest i you know i do agree yeah cable anything that you can get a little bit of intel but also get some benefit off that um and then not to mention, I did touch on Grandmaster. Odin as well. I mean, if you set up the Odin lane co correctly, even with, I would say what? I, really, though, you couldn't even have one other card on there, right? Because if you played, you could only play Odin on just the Baron lane. So that's kind of weird, right? In a way. Uh, so between Conquest, on reveal stuff, we'll have to see. I mean, it, it, I think he will be one of those that we're going to have to play kind of throughout the week to really know if he's going to be, you know, quote unquote worth it even though we know season passes are as a whole there is one more card though i think we'd be remiss to not mention and it's kind of like a card on the periphery that gets affected here but technically blob kind of gets hit by these cards right because you're pulling cards out of the deck so if like you know you pull their maximus that's power that blob doesn't get if you pull their their gladiator that's power that you know it's not getting i mean obviously blob's not being played in those decks but you know what i mean right blob does lose power by knocking these cards out well ultimately alex let's go to the next card because what could really hurt baron is that not really because he's a season pass but he is coming out on the same exact day as a card that listen we don't even need to hold back i think there are cards like hey maybe it bust maybe it does red hulk got an increase he is now a 611 guys and he's coming out on tuesday the ability is when your opponent ends a turn with unspin energy plus four power to red hulk if he's in your hand or in play now first of all shout out to second dinner love that he's the inverse of the hulk from high evo they've done good with the flavoring of the cards that's something definitely something we can credit alex i mean same time do you want to star rate this or, or what for me this is definitely a four star card um it has a very low floor very high ceiling and credit to second dinner as well it's learned the lessons from the past it did not get the hulk effect where it was just gaining power in the deck right they're like hold on we learned that lesson damn it we learned that lesson when we had the hulk getting to 20 something power so let's make it so it's in the hand or in play so like they literally copied the hulk text not allowing to be broken right off the top they did buff it by one power though can I ask why four, not five? But how how is this not just mostly a 615, a good, good chunk of the time? I would say large percentage of games, he's a 615, right? And that, then that's a great point. And then 619, if things go bad for your opponent, right? If they if the first two turns, there are high cost decks out there, man, all the time. That those first two turns, you gotta burn them. You do, they're gone. And then you have a 619 at that point. If we look at the stats across the board, it, it makes Giganto, just like Cole Obsidian make Crossbones laughable, it makes something like Giganto hilarious. I, I only want to give one five-star away each season, and this is, this is, how, how? Like, I just don't know. I think we've said this before. How does this not flop? But this is, to me, as clear as Miss Marvel. Okay. I, I can totally understand that. I'm, the reason why I have some hesitation is because I think that, like, uh, the power is not in your hands you have to be relying on your opponent and that's like the difference between devil dinosaur and ronin right devil dinosaur you control your your power with ronin you're banking on your opponent not playing cards down as effectively you have some ability to impact that but it's in their hands red hulk's the same red hulk you're relying on your opponent skipping and rolling energy we're not just talking about evo there's many decks that do i mean hell if you haven't been handed they skip turn one right like there it is, right? So it's not just about that. And I had this this thought, and you can actually answer to this, because I wasn't even sure of the answer. 
So Hope Summers is one of the most popular cards in meta at over 30% meta share. And we'll be talking about Hope soon, okay? Um, but Red Hulk, does Hope Summers make it so that people float more energy? Or does Hope Summers make it so that people can play on curve more aggressively? That's what I was struggling with. It just depends on the deck, right? I mean, first of all, this is the high Evo, as Alex loves to say, eating the lunch, right? Like, this guy eats high Evo's lunch, Sunspot, She-Hulk, one of the most popular cards. She-Hulk gets brutalized. Uh, any tear that you get She-Hulk discounted, Red Hulk's going to eat. Now, you do have to have them in your hand. Your opponent has no idea if you have them in your hand or not. Most people are going to have to assume moving forward after his release this is potentially making a red hulk go up if i don't get the uh you know the energy down in time uh interesting i would say most of the time when people play something into hope summers they've got something to play into it like a five or a six at that point uh but i, I get what you're saying there are definitely decks designed around beating the sunspot or just having you know maybe a little bit leftover energy uh and to that point locations bro i mean there's been times i can't tell you how many times I can't think I got sick brain, but you got that plus one location, you know, goes on turn two. Maybe you get the plus one energy. You're like, ah, oh, that's cool, but I only have a two cost card, right? And immediately Red Hulk is going to get that. So the location is Tinker's Workshop, I believe. And you're right. It, like sometimes you just accidentally float or like, hey, I got to play Zabu anyway or whatever. So you do it. Uh, and I think there's there's also those that like, was it new or something where you get the gins and like you just sometimes just play them down. Yeah. And you just like pump up all this extra energy. Like, well, I didn't even draw my six drops. So here. yeah, there's all these times you're just inadvertently floating energy. Like obviously Evo does it by design, but like there's so many other decks where like you just float it. Silver Server is an example of that. Turn four, you just like play a three drop anyways, right? So there's so many small ways you get punished and to speak to what you mentioned before red hulk you'll never know if it's someone's deck because it can kind of go everywhere right it's one of those cards that kind of is not archetype defined like defiant like it kind of goes wherever the hell it wants and that's why it's a five star for me because if i look at it like even blob when he was in his first form right like you just put blob in your deck he's that good and, and you look at it and you're like well it, it, with blob you are restricted a little bit you got to build some decks with higher power Red Hulk is just a 611, which is a good fine stat line. And then at worst, you know, uh, that's what you're getting. And you can just keep building up on that. And so that's where I feel like, uh, like in Hella, he's no no doubt taking Giganto spot, I would assume. Black Knight, he's probably going to find a way into that deck. Thanos, I would imagine he's going to be in Thanos decks moving forward, or at least being right there with Blob. That, I just see him working his way. His ramp is for sure going to utilize the card. So... That is where it's just like, it's interesting to me because you've got this kind of offense defense card again, right? This thing that just builds up and puts pressure. And if he works like high Evo Hulk, which I'm sure he does, he can even gain after turn six. So I, which we'd be shocked if someone didn't use all their energy then, but some people can't. I, I just think this guy, I, I'm puzzled, honestly, that he got a PowerPoint. And, and maybe that is to a test that he wasn't good enough, but I, I, I have a hard time seeing that. When you compare it to something like Magneto and something that Magneto taught me and the amount of Magneto I've been playing over the last month or so is that the actual effect is important. Like Marvel Snap is more than just power in a location. And obviously it comes down to having more power in two locations than your opponent, of course, right? But I think that the effect of Magneto, that, that like, you know, the ripping of the venom or the whatever, I think it's valuable, right? Now that's one of the reasons why it's so good. Just like with Dr. Doom, some of the advantage is not just 15 power across the board. I mean, Miss Marvel almost does that. It's accessing locations that you might not be able to access, right? It's the versatility of the card. Red Hulk does not have that versatility. It does not have the versatility of Magneto. It does not have the versatility of Dr. Doom. What it has though is Chonky Boy, right? That's exactly what it is. And sometimes you need that too. And if we like went full hilarious mode, what? There's six turns, okay? So if they didn't play on curve all six turns, what is that? 24 pa 24 pa No, what? Is he a 635? Am I am I correct in thinking that? I'm trying to do the math in my head very very quickly. I think he's a so 635. Yeah, it's a lot. Like he gets into the 30s, doesn't he? That's hilarious. I mean, obviously I won't rarely do that. It'll very rarely do that. I'm trying to I'm trying to work through a lot of the archetypes and how they want to play their cards out in, in the way they want to. Like Silver Surfer can struggle putting something down on turn five outside of Sarah, right? Like you're getting all that. If we go through all the decks, like Thanos isn't going to have a hard time. Like Thanos is able to play usually all that energy out. In fact, it has more than enough energy half the time. And that's what makes it so good. Oh man, this guy's going to be something. I think he's going to fill the big boy slot, but he's also going to have his, his own unique thing and a new threat and snap that we have to start thinking about. Oh man, can you imagine doing something like Wong 
into Psylocke Viper. So that, like you kick over it, that doesn't even make sense. I was trying to think, how do you force your opponent to have extra energy? That doesn't even work. I'm trying to think Never of like having, yeah. I was trying, I was to think trying like... to see how like I could pump them with like a Psylocke. It's such a stupid thing. <laughs> so don't do that. It doesn't work. On closing on Red Hulk, what about like Sandman too? Because Sandman, uh, you, you know, you get him out on a little ramp action. That person definitely hasn't prepped to you know play out that one card. And at that point, bro, you could just do Blob. Red Hulk, Arden Absola, Taskmaster kind of decks and feast. That's actually a good point. Sandman does put a like wrench in their plans, and some decks just can't play on curve, right? Like, you know, so that's a really good point. I like that. At the end of the day, you what you said before is perfect. Although he's massive in red, he's like a low-key stealthy way of having like this defensively offensive card that can just slam down insane power on your opponent when they don't expect it from almost any archetype. Yeah, he's going to be fun. I, I expect a lot of people to do... Like, Red Hulk won't be the easiest card to make a video. I mean, you could show him, right? But he's just made big, big boy stats, right? It reminds me of Blob. I think Blob, we're like, yeah, he's going to be good. And then, obviously, we saw, like, what he became. Uh, but that takes us to our next card, buddy, in US Agent. And, buddy, my gosh. Uh, they changed up a good amount. They actually changed a couple of these cards. He is now a two-cost, three-power card with the ongoing ability... Four, five, and six cost cards here have negative three power. So obviously on your side and opponents, kind of like the inverse of man thing is the best way to think about it. What are your thoughts here? One star, absolute poo. I don't like this card. Yeah, just think he's like never going to be played or I actually liked what he was beforehand almost because there was a couple of like archetypes you could almost build him into like uh, 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 Sorry, Sherry Sauron and stuff. Yeah, a couple things right off the top. One, I don't like the fact that, like, compared to Man... First of all, Man-Thing does not see much play at all, right? Let's be honest, right? I actually like Man-Thing. I, I, I'm I full cope, man, on Man-Thing. I try him all the time. Not that good. Unfortunate. The thing with Man-Thing is, though, is that you're going to have more ones, twos, and threes on the board. Moreover, when you play Man-Thing, you're able to play where you know they've already played a couple ones and twos, perhaps. As a two drop, what do you sneak them out later when they're playing their five? Like, why the hell would you do that as a two, three? It's disgusting, right? You would never do that. If you play it early, just avoid the lane. Even then, even if they play into it, you can play into it on purpose to, like, avoid Shang-Chi. You could literally use U.S. Agent to play big cards and avoid Shang-Chi on purpose. It's, uh, like, I, this card is filth, man. And if, you know what, if it comes to an absolute meta breaker, I deserve to get called out. This is the most one-star, one-star card I've, I've seen in a while. Like, actually, I would play Martyr before this. Oh, wow. So, okay, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that low on him. I definitely think he's probably um, towards the, the 1.5s status to two maybe probably two and i'll tell you why i think he does have hold on first of all this dude if you hold on to him what you're right it's such a weird curve play but he single-handedly wrecks living tribunal i mean eats its lunch iron man done done onslaught i think that he definitely like dude you're at that point just completely even the super scroll steal that they sometimes do so he's got that small niche okay and hey, listen, this is me just trying to find like the, the what the car will have for it, I guess, or I guess what they were thinking. I also think it's kind of interesting. That you could get something a little bit more on the Annihilus side of things, potentially with the uh, the Void uh, and Hobgoblin. Those are the only like play lines that I would even think of being something decent. But for the most part, it's pretty trash. Yeah, no, it, it absolutely. Even like Hobgoblin's hoping because like. You usually want to, like, maybe open that lane up for Galactus, but now you have this stupid U.S. agent there sitting there like, hey, Galactus, I'm here with my shield that I... Didn't he make his own shield? It was, like, all crappy. <laughs> like, I was trying to remember Falcon Winter Soldier. Uh, Soldier. It was not an actual um, shield, right? It was one that, like, just got, like, bent. Like, he, he was just... He was coping. That's, like, the sixth time we've said it today. And I believe I believe he comes out right after Red Hulk, which I think is a good thing, because, right, people are going to be able to use... I mean, a lot of people got War Machine, Red Hulk, and now, you know, okay, take a... Take a week, take, take, a take a breather, take a, you know, obviously guys, we could say Luke Cage and, and we, we've seen that with the negative cards, but again, it's mainly to Alex's point, four, fives and sixes, four is a little bit, but four, fives and sixes, there's not as many played. And on top of that, your opponent can use it to their advantage. You have to worry about the effect as well. Cerebro three, I, th th there's just, this is one we'll have to get our hands on more. I don't want to write them off completely, but this is one we'll have to, we'll have to definitely find a good use rather than like it being clear and obvious. Well, next up, Alex, we've got ourselves White Widow, who to what we thought was going to get a uh, change from the last time that we saw her. Although the change is still really fun. Uh, she's a two cost, two power card on reveal at a Widow's Kiss to your opponent's side. 
of this location. If we pull up a Widow's Kiss on going, this has negative four power. Disable this ability if your side of this location is full. And so very confusing text, right? Because if it's on their side, is it on your side of the location is full or the opponent's side? Uh, so we got that to talk about, but also just the general use of White Widow. What you thinking about this card, bud? So first of all, yeah, the text is like much more Magic the Gathering style text as opposed to Marvel Snap. Uh, first thought when I read the change, I was like, I'm going to power move this. I'm going to rogue this and just flex. Rogue snap this and just with your opponent just be so confused they retreat maybe. I don't know. I think that'd be so funny. But honestly, it's a damn shame because this card was by far my most sought after card of the season, even more than Red Hulk. I was always excited for Red Hulk, but this was the one that I was like, this is unbelievable. And they definitely toned it down. It definitely was going to be unbelievable. It's going to be insanely toxic. I still think this is good, though. I still think that there is a lot of potential here. But it, oh, I don't know if it's because I was so excited about the prior iteration. But I wrote so down good. three stars. You did three. I have, this is, this is one that I, I kind of, we were talking about at the intro. Very tough to evaluate this one. Because I need to see it in practical play. Like, I want to say, I want to say, like, mm, this could be really good. Could be a four-star card. I'll talk about why. But my gut does tell me a little bit lower than that. Yeah, we're going to really have to see with this one. And we're kind of more in line with a lot of our rankings here. Uh, outside of like a 0.5 difference on US Agent. Uh, but yeah, so Widow's Kiss, by the way, uh, it's their side. It's their card now. So it's their side of the board. It's talking about not the, your side, not the White Widow side, right? It's their side of the board. So they're going to be trying to fill that lane up, obviously, to get rid of that thing. Uh, right away, I just want to say uh, I love Killmonger here. I think this is a really cool Killmonger play because you're able to where they think maybe that side is full. All of a sudden, you make it unfull, negative four, and plus the one's gone now. So pretty big swap in power. I think that's really unique. Uh, but Alex, I think what makes me want to give this a high rating is the clog, bro. Clog is killing it right now. Like really a sneaker in the archetype department. Uh, looking at best decks. I mean, I saw some really good clog decks out there. And we got to remember, this thing is putting for two costs. It's putting a card on their side of the location that they have to deal with immediately, right? This is one of those bar sinister space thrown winners right out the rip, you know? Green Goblin used to be the one to fear. Now it's almost White Widow to some extent. Uh, and so you get a quick clog element, first of all. Even if you're not getting the negative four, you're just filling up a spot, which is pretty damn good. Uh, but then also you got other ways to manipulate this ability. I think it's pretty cool. It is cool. And like, I don't know if I'm... Uh... I'm hot from the Hopium, but like, is this is this Punisher? Is this a potential Punisher game? Like, I don't know if Punisher actually has something to say about this or what. Oh, yeah, dude, I I was looking at I was looking at the dude. That's that's full Hopium. That's like you're on medical grade lethal dosage of Hopium if Punisher is uh, in your. You are putting stuff on their side, and so you know my my brain thinks like okay, maybe C two, maybe potentially you got a storm lane. You pop it in there. They can't fill that lane up in time. You're gonna win that lane maybe because you're putting that negative four there potentially uh yeah but punisher to your point but no uh beast again i think this is another beast card i mean you have another way to plug in two different locations they, they don't have a lot of operation from that point you know what really screws up this card super 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 bad why i took it right down to a three for me annihilus just snaps on it you send them a negative four and they just send it back to you as a negative four. Like, honestly, Annihilus, this is just fodder. Like, this is absolute fodder for Annihilus. It's fodder for Destroy. Both of those, like, both of those, you could easily get to Infinite. Like, easily win Infinity Conquest, both those archetypes. I think, I think Annihilus is by far the most slept on archetype in Marvel Snap. And this is just gravy for that archetype. Absolute gravy. I, I love it for playing with it too, because essentially what's cool about it is you could do Widow's Kiss, maybe the like left side, right? Okay, so or middle, either or. And then you do the Sentry play, right? And now your opponent's like, oh my God, I got to fill Void, I, but I got to also fill the White Widow. And they can't do both. They can't do both. So playing, Anni I think Annihilus is going to feast and, and White Widow's going to kind of slot kind of nicely in there into these Annihilus decks as well. Uh, you're right though. That's definitely going to be, you know, there's bound to be counters to the card. We always have to look at how played are those counters right so potentially uh mojo is mojo did mojo finally come out to play maybe i only know one person that plays mojo it's my brother he swears it's a good card i, I swear he's drunk i think mojo is like one of the worst cards in the game but like I, okay i guess what are we talking about a lane with like widow's kiss and then like mojo and punisher and it, you're just you're just loving both life like what you does this look like you would go with both those in the deck just call it uh team hopium the hopium avengers 
Yeah, yeah. Well, on, the, on a more serious note, what about like, because um, uh, this is in the clog deck these days, especially, it's like kind of a harder play to pull off. Uh, and it's rewarded by if you play a lot of snap, you get good at it. Uh, the Titania Goblin play. You don't even have to do uh, Green Goblin there, but Titania, if you can clog that lane with her and White Widow, you know, you play down Titania, then you play White Widow, the Widow's Kiss goes over, Titania goes to that side, they can't play any cards, and all you have to do is play one more card, boom, negative four. All I'm saying while well, Titania is playing that card increases the stress level of my Marvel so Snap hard. gameplay by like 45%. Like I can't, I can't do it, man. It's Every time one. I put Titania in the deck, like I want to play this card. I'm like, I'm just like, F this card, man, I can't do it. Like I, either I'm garbage at this game or this card just is not built for me. I know there's some people out there. Like I know Jeff plays a lot of Titania and stuff like that. I was like, buddy, I, I just can't. I just don't want to deal with this damn card, man. It's a hard one, man. But I do think Clog is, is not an easy archetype to play either. And, and I think there's the possibility, like Cannonball, maybe we'll like White Witch a lot here to get the widow's kiss we need more ways to clog up debris kind of been the main thing it's just weird that she's a clog but also you don't want to clog too much it's a very weird high you know iq kind of play yeah to your point i think jeff is gonna love this card yeah but honestly like white widow another card as cozy mentioned we're gonna have to get our hands on because it has been nerfed significantly I mean, we're saying it got nerfed right we're talking about like data mines before right but like it's not even released yet how do you know for a card that's not released but you know what i mean right it definitely has been brought more in line with expectation power wise because before it was absolutely cracked out of control now it's much more reasonable but i do think that like a three-star rating is probably where i land it's funny because we were like you know there's no way it comes out like this her and red hulk and and then they gave red hulk power and that's where i'm just like okay yeah, yeah. He's going to be nuts. Uh, the next card may not be a five-star card, but this is my five-star card. This is by far my favorite card. No question of the month. It, it just hits my play style to a T. I'm going to love playing with Valentina, guys. On reveal, she's a two-cost, three-power card. Add a random six-cost card to your hand, and then you're going to give it negative two costs and negative three power. Sign me up, man. Sign me up for this card. This is going to be a freaking blast. You know what, Cozy? So this was one of the ones that I sat with for a while. I was like, I was really going through the lines, going through all the six drops, which ones are good, which ones are bad. I'm landing, and I, I always get nervous saying my star rating first, but I'm going to go for it, Cozy. I'm giving this a four. I think this is a hey, good card. Oh, yeah, baby. Dude, It's de I think it's definitely... Okay, here, I did this. I got a little chat GPT involved, okay? I got chat GPT. I put all the six cost cards on chat GPT, and I said to give me 10 examples, pulling two randomly, and I'm just going to read the list off, right? And this is the possibility of what of what this thing could pull, right? And you just tell me. You tell me if you love this, you hate it, okay? So I guess snap or pass. We'll use that. Okay. Just, you, you snap on this, you pass on it. Arnim Zola Galactus. Arnim, uh, four cost, four cost. Passed. Yeah, because, dude, Passed that's a tough this. one. Because you got a negative Arnim Zola and Galactus. You would have to really hit. It is on turn four. You could play him, though, but uh, interesting. Hey, Nolan Red Hulk. Interesting. Probably snap. Okay. Apocalypse and Ultron. Ah, pass. Yeah, it's a tough one. Spectrum Hella. Another pass, yeah. Pass. Doctor Doom. Snap. Doom. Snap, just snap. Doctor Doom's Party. awesome. Yep, I He know. loses yeah, yeah, yeah. three power, but the bots remain. Like, that's one of the best ones. Yep, and Onslaught was going to be the... Uh, which I think is still great for that. Probably hey. fine, yeah. Odin and She-Hulk. Snaps. Infinite Magneto. Hmm, I like Magneto. Infinite, not so much. Still snaps. Okay. Blob and Odin. Ah, pass. Living Tribunal and She-Hulk. Wow, you're passing on a lot of these. I'd pass on that. You're saying this is going to be a good card, and you've passed on most of these. Uh, on, on most. Well, it's because, like, Tribunal, I think, is super sus with this. Like, I, I wouldn't play Tri... You don't just play Tribunal for fun. You're like, oh, well, I want 12 power across my time. I, I, <laughs> you don't just play Tribunal. What the hell, man? To be... But to, to look at some of this... You got to remember, though, Luke Cage just in, like, the way this can curve out, you could essentially, if things go right, like, take that Arnim Zola Galactus hand, you're like, pass. Well, if you play Valentina and you have Luke Cage ready to go, you're at that point, you just have a four-cost Galactus. You have a, you have a Arnim Zola that you could even play early, copy it twice, and then go from there and play the Luke Cage later on. Dude, a most of the, like, Red Hulk and Noel, and, and think about it, this was only one instance, right? There's some instances where you're just getting Dr. Doom's Magnetos, you're getting some good stuff. This is going to allow a weird new archetype, in a way, of, like, this six-cost... Oh, man, there's gonna be Quinjet in there. I think she's gonna slide right in there with Quinjet Loki. I, I just don't... I think it's the, one of those classic, if you hate what you have, you kill it, but if you love it, you get some crazy value. 
you know what you're going to see, right? This is exactly what you're going to see. You're going to see Quinjet, right? You're, <laughs> you're going to see um, Zabu on the board. And this is going to be a highlight on, on Reddit where someone makes a post tilted out of their mind. You're going to see Shanchi one lane for three costs, and then a three cost because of the Quinjet Elias in the other lane. <laughs> And like that's what's gonna happen. That's the world we're coming up to. Because when you get a Lyoth now at four, discounted to three because of Quinjet, that's that's what tilt is made of. Yeah, and we we with Nick Fury, it doesn't give you um Agatha. It says random. I would imagine this could be the exact same kind of thing. We may not have Agatha in the pool. We'll have to, you know, find out. Because if you get Agatha on turn three, uh GG, and then it's almost like oof, that's you know, that's tough. That's gambling with a lot. And then really? It, she plays herself. It's like almost immediately. Oh yeah, you're right. It's so she would actually, that bad. yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah. I was uh, so she's what at that point she's negative three. So she's only dude. She's still double digits. All actually, day. might be a good pull. I know. Okay, you might actually want that. That'd be cool, man. Actually, okay, okay, I like it. I mean, it, listen, Odin onslaught, uh, leader. A lot of these cards just have fantastic abilities attached to them rather than just the power. And then the ones that don't have just massive power. So like, it's yeah. kind of a win-win either way. Uh, I could see this again. Yeah, Pixie, Loki. These kind of just like already kind of weird decks uh hey, ravona at this point you could then take down let's say um uh, i don't know leader is the first one that comes to mind he goes down to negative one but now ravona can also discount him even more uh, as well so you have multiple ways to continue the discounts on these guys valentina is going to be super fun and, and a hard thing to play against when they play because you're going to have to be like i have it's like the raft like what did they get i have no idea and luke cage technically just nullifies it now Mo uh, mobius i was just gonna say <laughs> there's someone else that likes to nullify things as well uh mobius and mobius does kind of give us a nice clapping though is it when you give it negative two cost a I, I i would assume mobius like if you played mobius and your opponent played mobius it would go back to six yeah i mean your cards yeah. can't be reduced but i think this is giving that negative two cost. so i think it's just like she hulk would be yeah exactly like the way mobius's interaction has been it always trumps every other cost reduction no matter what so like if you both play everything just stays vanilla right like yeah, yeah so what you're saying is correct yeah so really good card man i think this would be fun uh i give it a four star for sure probably like a 3.5 to 4 and, and it is my five star favorite card it's at the pixie of this month just extremely uh crazy excited to see more of valentina uh, and fun fact, I believe I'm making the video for that for the uh, the Snap channel, guys. So I'll get to Ooh, cool. test her early, and I'm excited about it. Um, lastly, my gosh, this guy got a glow up. Red Guardian. He was a lot different last time we looked at him. He's a three cost, three power card now on reveal. Afflict the lowest power enemy card at the location you play Red Guardian with negative two power, and you remove its text. Oh boy, Alex, what are you giving this? Uh, so once again, some more Magic the Gathering style text boxes here. Um, I almost feel like it should be, we, should, we need like a new keyword. If we're going to add re recruit, we need to add like mute, mute the card or something like that, right? Just clean it up a little bit. But anyways, this is, yeah, this has been changed a bunch. I'm going with three stars, but actually, ironically, this one has been by far the hardest for me to rank. This was the one I went back and forth on. I feel like it's better than I was giving initial credit for because even something like Zabu, that's a huge, huge change, right? And you can play this reactively to something like a Zabu. Uh, so I like that. Ravona, the same way, right? Uh, Mobius gets crushed with this. Any, any really high impact two drop in the game hates Red Guardian. And so, like, I think it has potential. I'm just not quite sure how it'll play. It's a new, t I know. So this is what it reminds me of. It's a new tech card is the way to look at it. And tech cards, we have seen land way up here and tech cards have gone way down here. So it's going to have a lot of universal use in a lot of ways that excites me. And I think I want to give it like a four plus star just for the utility we're about to talk about. But also it's like, okay, but how many times will this be useful, right? Like even Lady Deathstrike, which coincidentally I think is a spotlight card with her. Kind of makes sense. You can kill all the other cards and then you can, you know, have one remain. And that's where I think Red Guardian is cool, man. Like Noel is a great example. Noel is oftentimes played on his own lane. And if you can somehow know when they're going to have that or X-23 was played, so they play the Noel early. If you play this guy on the later end, he straight up kills the Noel. He straight up can just ruin that card. Now, it is by power. Noel would have to be the only card there. But I think that's really cool about him is that he can shut down solo lanes completely. And he's a new ongoing uh, counter. He can go against ongoing cards really well. Uh, Iron Man, obviously, would be brutalized. Dracula... Uh, as well, Devil Dinosaur, if that's played in some location. So there is some really cool bang with this card 
And then on the floor side, to your point, Zabu, Mobius, you know, these cards, Ravona, you're able to shut those down too. Uh, again, another living tribunal killer in, in a sense as well, because you're able to not only get rid of the Iron Man uh, potentially, but you can also give it negative three power, negative two power. Uh, going back to what I said about, uh, well, I forgot which one it was. Oh, with, um, with w Widow's Kiss, you could kill Monger and get rid of what they thought was the lowest power card. And then there's only one that remains, and it's the one that you can turn the text off. You can get rid of Deadpool. This guy's got some serious potential, man. He does. And even something like turning off a Nebula is kind of really valuable. Like, Nebula is one of those cards that sneakily gets powerful through the course of a match, right? And I had this thought as well, like, does this destroy a lot of these ongoing cards that often sit by themselves, right? But what I think is balanced here is that, like, something like an Enchantress, which is slightly more power and more expensive, has that blanket effect, right? It hits everything in the location. It'll hit the armor. It'll hit the double dinosaur. It'll hit whatever else is there. Whereas the Red Guardian is only going to hit the one targeted. So I do think it's well designed from that standpoint. It doesn't, like, completely, you know, power creep on Enchantress, who... It has been seeing some play, but honestly, since it's nerfed from a four, well, went from a four six, it went from a four four to a four six to a four five. I think this finds this interesting niche. It'll just be, it's you just have to test it. Like I'm just, I'm really, I really want to get this card in my hands to test it because it is a really unique tech card. I almost see it comparable to Shadow King, where it's like Shadow King. It's hard to really feel how powerful that card is until you see it really pop off. What makes me worried about him? And to the point against Shadow King is that he's three cost. I, I want we've yeah. seen that before. It's expensive, man. It's an expensive tech card in some ways. Maybe if you play him alongside another one like Shang Chi and you had the Zabu, whatever. I I gotta see the 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 worth, and not only for the deck spot but also just playing him out later rather than earlier. But man, we've all been there where your opponent just top stack Black Knight all the time or Zabu, and it's like this is a nice little way if you're sick of that uh, to really you know feast off it. So there's some you know somewhat stronger potential there uh i also think it could be funny to you know find a way to turn off a card ability right before they're about to do this huge play you know we already talked about like deadpool but there's there's tons of examples of just that like let's say even like i don't know brood you're able to play that and then they're about to play an absorber man but you turn off the brood so it has no text now at this point it, it, there's some cool stuff to be bound with red guardian and, and it's a fun character at that so definitely uh definitely is exciting bro we said this would be a shorter episode uh, I, I, I'm pretty much like spitting blood at this moment, but it's, uh, but we got through it, man. We got through it and we were able to talk about all the, all the new cars, really fun season ahead and, and outside of the U S agent. I think this is a pretty unique one at that. It's a strong season. Each of the cards have their own unique flavor, which I think is great. Like you want to have these cards kind of hold their own, make the meta interesting that week they come out. And uh, ultimately I think we're in for a fun ride. Well, guys, you're going to have to go over to Alex's side of the Snapchat as we give our final rankings. We're going to do what we did. Uh, we did what we did today, but over in March, and we're going to hold ourselves accountable for what those have been ranked. And then, of course, the Snapchat mailbag, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. And as always, until the next one, happy snapping.